If you're looking for a way to spice up your images with creative color, then look no further than this easy four-step process I'm about to break down for you right now. Now, step number one in this creative color editing process is using the hue saturation adjustment to do the bulk of the work in totally transforming the colors in the image. Whenever you're editing your photos with this type of effect, you wanna focus on the most dominant color in your image, which is going to vary on every photo. But in this particular example, the dominant color is going to be the greens and yellows throughout the forest around the waterfall. So those are the areas that I'm going to target with these adjustments. So with my image layer selected here in the layers panel, we'll create a new hue saturation adjustment layer simply by going to the adjustments panel and going to the hue saturation adjustment right here. This will create a new adjustment layer directly above our image layer that will apply all of our editing effects to that image. To make our life easier, we can click on this little hand icon right here and then go and click on the color that we want to change. So this will automatically choose the yellows channel in this case for me. So I can go to the hue slider and play around with this to totally change the color of that specific selected color range. So in this case, I want them to be sort of a rich orangey red color almost. It's not going to look super realistic, but that's the whole point. It's a creative color edit. So I'm going to move this over to a really far and wild hue adjustment like that. And then we can go and adjust the saturation and lightness of these colors. So I'll play around with the saturation, increasing that a touch to make it look a bit more intense. And then for the lightness, this will just adjust how light or dark that selected color range is. I will probably just add a little bit of lightness here to brighten up all of those yellow tones. Now, in this particular case, there's not a lot of other colors left over, but if you want to check, you can click on the hand icon here and sample another color range to try to find something else. But in this case, pretty much no matter where I click, I still remain within the yellows color range. So that's the only channel that I'm going to affect in this case. However, if you have additional colors in your photo, take a moment to go through a couple other color channels simply by using that hand icon and then sampling the color that you want to change. Now, in this particular image, the river here has gone quite red because if I click on it with that hand icon enabled, you'll notice that I still remain within the yellows color channel. And this is why this has become sort of this reddish color. And I'd rather have the water actually look white or maybe a bit more blue, for example. So to fix this, I'm going to create another hue saturation adjustment layer, but it will only be applied to our waterfall and the river. So just like before, I'll create a new hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking the hue saturation adjustment within the adjustments panel here to create a hue saturation 2. Now I'll go and click on the hand icon and then click on the river like so to activate that color channel which in this case is still the yellows. But now what we're going to do is go and adjust the hue of this color channel with our eyes only focused on what we're trying to adjust, which is the river in this case. So I'll just add a few points positively to the hue, and then I'll go to the saturation and bring this down so that the river becomes nice and white. It doesn't have as much red or yellow tones anymore. And then I'll go to the lightness slider and just drag this up to brighten up the entire river overall. Now, of course, this is going to affect all of the colors in the photo here, and I want to have that nice saturated forest around the edges. So what we need to do is adjust the layer mask here so that this particular adjustment, which we applied for our river, is only visible on our river and not around the edges at all. So to begin, we need to first invert our layer mask by clicking on this layer mask here and pressing Command or Control I to invert that mask and therefore make everything on it totally invisible. But but we can now add back visibility by using the brush tool while painting white and just painting over the river. So by selecting the brush tool by pressing B, I'll set my foreground color to white and make sure I'm using a soft round brush with the opacity and flow at 100%. Now with that black layer mask selected, I'll just go and paint over the river like so to apply the color adjustments just from that hue saturation adjustment wherever I go and paint. So I'm just going to paint over the water and I'm gonna to try to avoid anything else that would be on the foliage and things like that. So turning this on and off, you can see the slight but noticeable difference this makes to basically remove a lot of the yellows from the water and it just makes it look a little bit better in my opinion. So that completes the first step of the process, which is our hue saturation adjustment. Sometimes you'll just get away with one adjustment layer, but other times you might need 
too, like we did here, so that you can refine the colors of specific areas a little bit better. Now this brings us into step two of the process, which is using the selective color adjustment layer. Within the adjustments panel, we'll scroll down and find the selective color adjustment right here and click on it to add it to our layer stack. Now to ensure that these colors of this layer blend in really nicely across the entire photo, let's apply our image onto this layer mask by first going up here to image and then down here to apply image. Inside of the apply image dialog box, make sure the layer is set to merged, blending mode normal, and we'll click OK. This will apply a black and white version of your photo onto this adjustment layer mask, so then that way, all of the colors will blend differently into the highlights versus the midtones and the shadows, and you just get the best result from this. Now, the whole goal of the selective color adjustment is to enhance and improve all of the color adjustments that we made with the hue saturation adjustment. So to begin with the selective color adjustment active here, we'll go to the colors drop down menu and choose the blacks. Within the blacks, we can play around with the black slider, which will either add black by increasing it or white by decreasing it or brightening up that specific area. In this case, I want to have a nice contrasty photo, so I'll increase the intensity of the blacks. Now let's go and try to enhance the colors around the rest of the photo using these other sliders. So I'll play around with the yellows, increasing the yellows a bit going to the magentas and adding a bit of magenta in there as well to increase those rich warm colors. And then as for the cyan, I'll decrease the slider to add a touch of red across the entire photo, or in this case, the blacks exposure range. Next, I'll go to the neutrals, click on that, and we'll do the same thing, just working through these sliders to make some slight adjustments here. I'll maybe lighten up the neutrals a touch and then play around with the colors to see what effects we can get. Adding a bit of yellow and then a touch of red. Finally, we'll go to the whites adjustment here, the whites color channel, and we're going to repeat this process one more time. So either adding white by dragging down on the blacks or adding black by increasing the blacks. In this case, I want those highlights to pop, so I'll decrease the black slider to brighten up those areas. And now we can just play around with the colors to basically affect the water in this particular case because that's the only major highlight in the photo, but yours might be a bit different depending on your image. I'll add a bit of cyan just to add some blue colors to the waterfall there. And as for the magentas, I'll just increase that a touch as well. And now I'm happy with the look of that. Turning this on and off, you can see how it just makes the colors that we did with the hue saturation adjustment a lot more intense and rich. And we have one more adjustment layer in step number three that we can use to further along this effect as well. Now, if you're enjoying these techniques so far and are excited to try them for yourself, let me know by hitting the like button down below. I really appreciate it and let's get back into it. So with this complete, we're now ready for step number three, which is adding a color balance adjustment layer. Once again, found within the adjustments panel, we'll go to the color balance adjustment layer right here. And we want to do the same thing with the layer mask by applying the image. But rather than going up to image, apply image and doing all that again, we can just hold alter option and click on the layer mask of the selective color layer. And then while holding alter option, we can click and drag that up and drop it onto the color balance layer to just duplicate that layer mask and save us a bit of time. Now clicking on the icon of the color balance adjustment layer here to access the properties panel, we'll start in the shadows range and we'll just play around with these sliders to once again try to intensify the colors that we have. Again, the whole point here is just to make these colors pop as much as possible with these additional adjustments. Now we'll go to the highlights adjustment and play around with this as well, maybe adding some blue in here, maybe a touch of cyan for the waterfall and play around with that magenta slider as well. Finally, I'll go to the midtones to just finalize this effect, adding a bit more yellow and red to increase that really rich color that we have there. And now I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. So now we've completed the first three steps of the process and we have one final step to continue on with, which is dodging and burning because although it's not a color adjustment necessarily, it goes a really long way in enhancing these creative color looks. So to begin, we need to create a 50% gray layer for our dodge and burn adjustments to be applied onto. To create this type of layer, just press Command or Control, Shift and N to open up the new layer dialog box. For the name, I'll call this to dodge and burn and then set the mode from normal down here to overlay. And finally, I'll make sure to check the fill with 50% gray option and click okay. 
This will create a new layer filled with 50% gray that we can apply our dodge and burn adjustments onto. With that layer selected, I'll grab my dodge or burn tool by pressing O on my keyboard. In this case, I have the burn tool active. So that's the first one that I will use, which is going to darken anywhere that I paint over. So it's the little hand icon that kind of looks like this. With the burn tool selected, which is going to darken areas that I paint over, I'll make sure that I'm using a soft round brush I'll set the range to midtones and my exposure to 10%. I'll also make sure to check the protect tones option so that everything will look nice as I paint over. Now the exposure amount here will just change how intense the brush adjustments are each time you paint over your image, but I would recommend using a lower value rather than a higher value because it's easier to paint over the same area multiple times rather than having to undo a bunch of things later on. So with all these settings good to go, with that dodge and burn layer selected, I'm going to go and paint over any naturally dark areas of the photo, such as in the trees over this way, along the shoreline over here, and again you can click and drag over the same area multiple times to further darken those areas or further burn those areas. Using the bracket keys, you can easily scale up or down your brush and you just want to go and darken up any of those naturally dark features in the image to begin with. Once you've gone ahead and done that, we can add some stylized darkening adjustments by scaling up our brush a bit further. And now I'm going to go and darken around the edges of the photo a bit more so that our attention is drawn to the lighter areas, which is the waterfall and sort of the brighter trees up here. So that means I'm going to click and drag to darken around this area and you can click and paint over the same area multiple times to darken it down much more than before. So I'll just continue this process around different parts of the edges here on both sides, just to basically darken the edges and draw our attention towards the subject, AKA the waterfall in this particular case. So I'll just continue to paint around there like so. Once you're happy with your burn adjustments, we can now dodge our image, which is going to brighten areas that we paint over instead. To access your dodge tool, we'll just click and hold on the burn tool icon and then go to the dodge tool. Once again, we'll use a soft round brush, range set to mid-tones, exposure 10%, and protect tones is checked. With the dodge and burn layer still selected here in the layers panel, we can now begin to go and paint over any areas that we want to brighten or draw attention to. So that's going to be the waterfall and the river in my image here, as well as maybe some of the foliage along the shoreline, just to add a bit of interest and whatnot around here. If anything looks too intense, you can always press command or control Z to undo those adjustments and you can try again afterwards, it's no big deal. So I'm just going to continue to paint around some of these areas to make them look a little bit more interesting and have them pop overall. So I'll paint over some of these trees as well, mostly up in the top areas. I'll then lower the exposure intensity. So it's going to be a less intense brightening adjustment. I'll leave this set to 5%. And now I'll just go and paint over some of the bushes here that I had darkened previously. And that looks pretty not bad to me right there. So now with most of these adjustments complete, you could continue to do this as much as you want until you're happy with the look that you have. But turning that dodge and burn adjustment on and off, you can see how it just gives us a nice stylized moody look to complete this creative color grading effect. Now let's go and quickly take a look at our before and after. Going to my bottom image, I'll hold alter option and click on the eyeball icon here to see the before and then the after. So as you can see, obviously this isn't a realistic edit, but it's a super creative creative, unique, completely different type of edit that's a lot of fun to create. And I love doing this type of stuff whenever the image allows for it. Color grading is just one piece of your entire editing process that we didn't really have the time to discuss in depth in this video. Luckily, you can learn my entire start to finish editing workflow inside of Photoshop by clicking this video right here. This tutorial will share everything you need to know to build your skills off of what you learned here. And I definitely recommend checking it out to continue on from this video.